Well, people, I finally got to it. After all these months, and after all this time, I finally got to the review people have been wanting to see for the longest time. To think I'm doing it on Halloween night. I don't know if that means anything to you, but I don't care. Finally, I, I'm going to re be reviewing the Almighty Megazord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I'm, of course, talking about the 1993 edition. Or, as the real Nostalgia Man would say, the only good version. 2010? Sorry. Now, as I said before, this Megazord was around 30 bucks when I bought him, about $25, $30. Pretty cheap, but you're thinking, wow, gee, 30 bucks, it wasn't really that... Didn't really come that good, right? Well, as you can see right now, it didn't. It doesn't really look as good as you would have thought. But hey, you know, you can you just gotta get what you can get, right? And as you'll see, it's not in a breakdown style because it's more. And you thought, well, hey, it's more than three zords. It has to be in a breakdown style. Well, I well, I just decided to say, you know what? I'm I'm just giving that up. It's not really even worth my time anymore doing. I'll just review the full mega zord now. So um. Yeah, enough about that. Let's just get right to the review itself. Let's first start in morphing order with the Mighty Mastodon. Mastodon is in good looking condition. Um, well, mainly just like his face is in good condition. He's only missing his trunk, which I feel is a little disturbing, a little upsetting. But hey, you know, I actually plan on finding a spare trunk and attaching it here. They say a good um, a bit of super glue works, but then again... It doesn't work as well as you may think, but who okay, cares? Point is, it looks good. Articulation. You can sort of bend at the knee, but really, it's only good if you can transform it. Well, other than that, it looks really good. My only real complaint is that the head is mainly gray, not black. Unlike, you know, it's 2010 counterpart in which the whole head is black and it matches the body, but hey, I'm not complaining. Moving on to the, ter to the pterodactyl. First thing you'll notice. His little cannon feet are missing. When I bought him, he didn't come with cannon feet. Well, she didn't come with the cannon feet, but it doesn't matter. Now, stickers on here are, are actually applied pretty well. The uh, previous owner really did do a bang-up job doing it. Okay, sure, the little sticker here is a little, little lopsided, but eh, it's a lot better than you know what I did for my 2010 version. Wings fold in. You can break its neck by having it... Well, yeah, I can do that. Interior is actually pretty snazzy. I like it. So, that does it for the pterodactyl. Next, Triceratops. As you'll notice, this one is the most abused. It's missing an eyeball, it's missing its horns, and of course, the big one is missing the little shooter from its little um, weapon tail. That's the real negative part about it, and of course, the sticker has been practically peeled to hell. Now, I do plan on getting stickers for these guys once I, you know, find the time to make the said purchase. But other than hoping to get more stickers, um, and a brand new horn, and maybe paint on a red eye, not much you can really do with them except, like, roll them around, like, he does have his special wheels. That's good. 2010 version did not have wheels, so this makes this one a whole lot better. Now let's move on to the Sabertooth Tiger. I have to say, great looking Zord. Detailing on this one as well as the others, not too bad, although it has seen better days. The wheels, excellent. Play with his little fangs. Bend his legs. And of course, push on in the legs. And play with the laser tail. Bang. You don't really see that too often in Mighty Morphin. I saw it once in, what was it? Um, Birds of a Feather? Yeah, Birds of a Feather. It's pretty nice. It's good. And of course we move on to the big bad boy himself, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Controlled by the almighty Jason. This, the, this word was always my particular favorite because it's the only one that actually could ever fight its own battles. On its own two feet, its own two arms. Good, good, good. You can snap its neck up, make him talk, Rawr! everything like that. You can snap his kneecaps. So, it's pretty good. Some stickers peeling off, and of course, as you'll notice, the big tail tip is gone. 
So when it's, yeah, there's no little flip-up action. Although that's where the 2010 version does have its advantages because it's just one giant tail and it just doesn't snap. Which makes it a little bit more realistic, but this one is more nostalgic to me. And before you even say it, no, I'm not doing a compare and contrast video. To me, it's just not worth my time. Just not worth my time. Because I'm pretty sure we all know what the differences are. But yeah, other than that, good looking Megazord, and hey, it's time to call upon the power of the Megazord. So let's get right to it. First, we're going to take the saber tooth, fold up the fangs, roll up his little feeties, and push him in. Fold him the tail. Got one leg. Now we take the Triceratops. If you blink, you'll miss the transformation. Don't blink. Don't blink. Don't blink. Wow. So that's one other foot. Take again, Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Bring up the legs. And then you'll just slide his knees and hand, well, hands, his feet and kneecaps. So it looks like he's sitting. And then you will snap the kneecaps into the little sockets on the Megazord. It's, uh, well, the Megazord's, you know, bums, if you will. So now we got our... We got things going, got things going. Next we're going to fold up his little arms over here. Next, next we're going to snap the Mastodon's head off. And we're going to split him open, giggity. Fold up his arms. One thing to make sure of, make sure the tail is out so you can connect to the back. And they'll snap on, just like so. Fold the legs out a little bit more. All right. Oh, there we go. Great. Next, we will take his head, open up the little tab in the back, and then that connects to the little hole on the T-Rex's chest. For me, I just move my head upwards just so I can fit in more easily. And finally, jump over here, take the pterodactyl. Now, there are two little connecting joints right on its side, and there's, and there's some little grooves around here, around the uh, mammoth's feet, well, Mastodon's feet. That will slowly connect in, and there we go. That's good. Now we got the finished tank mode. I have to say, it's pretty good looking. I've I've always preferred the tank mode. In fact, I think every single Megazord should have its own pre-warrior transformation, just to make it look more, you know, scary. Now, as you'll notice, it just doesn't look complete without the little cannons on front. But still, I still have nothing to really complain about. Still rolls. It's, it's still good. I got no problems with it. Tank mode, it's for the win. But not as much as for the win when we get to the almighty Megazord transformation. So, let's do it. The Megazord sequence has been issued. We're going to open up the little shoulders over here. That will make the hands fold out more fluidly. Take off Miss Pterodactyl. Yeah, you'll stay there. And finally, we'll just take the tail in the back. And now it's just snap into place. Usually, when you snap it in, the little flip, I mean, the little tip's going to flip down. But that's not the case right now. Take the mammoth's head and, uh, ah, you're going off to the side. And then, we're going to raise them up, we're going to snap the Triceratops and Sabertooth's necks, and then up we go. Now we're going to bring down the chest of the T-Rex, we're going to take the head, and we're going to snap it off to reveal the Megazord face, close them up, then we got the Pterodactyl coming on in, Head comes flying in, snaps down, fold in the wings, two little connector joints right here, and two little ends right over here, and that just connects in like so, 
Mine aren't mine aren't really as sturdy as they really should be, but when I think they're working pretty good now, most of the time they don't work. And finally, you just take the little horns in the back, bring them forward. Come on. And there, we got the Megazord. Just the Megazord. Oh, man. I just love saying it, but this is the best Megazord in all Power Rangers history. Don't care who you are, what year, what year, what year you were born, or what your favorite series is, this is the best Megazord in all existence. And even though I got a cheap one for 30 bucks that didn't come with a lot of things that I wanted, I still don't regret buying it. I really don't regret it. Not even for a minute. In terms of the overall detailing, even though he has seen better days, he'll make a fine addition to your shelf, regardless of you know how many scratches he has. But that's just my opinion. The only things you can really do is bend him at the knee, make him look like he's walking. And of course he'll bend over from, from time to time. Arms in the 360 rotation. Yeah, not really much you can do about that. But of course, what would the Megazord be without the Power Sword? Boom. This is the one weapon that every Megazord buyer should make sure they have before even buying it. Horns, yeah, you can buy, you can find separately, and, and you know maybe you can even find the sword separately. But make sure the sword always comes with your Zords the way it came with mine, because I've actually seen the sword go for like thirty bucks just by itself, just for this sword alone, completely you know clean or scuffed up. Doesn't matter. Oh, which by the way, mine is a little scuffed up. I've I've seen people pay thirty bucks for just the sword alone. That shows just how much. People care about the classics. And of course, you can't really make it a full complete toy without the utilization of the Mammoth Shield. Why do I keep saying Mammoth? It's Mastodon. Fine. And there you go. The Mastodon Shield is in place. It's just a shame that the shield was never used at the same time as the sword. It usually was either just the sword or the shield. Usually the shield has only been used on rare occasions. My most favorite occasion was when it was using to, when it was used to block Tommy's uh, power beam when it was being fired toward the Megazord. Which, by the way, I thought was a super fight. I mean, come on, come on! You got a seven-story, not 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 seven-story, maybe like a thirty-story tall Megazord fighting off against a six-foot-tall man. Oh yeah, I wonder who's gonna win that one. But still, just look at this thing. It's iconic to the Power Rangers community. If you're going to tell me that you do not want this want this Megazord in your collection, I think you've got some problems you need to work out with the Power Rangers counselor. But yeah, definitely guys, get him. Get him. Steal your parents' credit cards. Open up your own credit cards. Just take money from your from 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 your friends, your grandmother, your your uncle Joseph. I don't care. Make sure you get this guy in your collection. No, he is worth it. If you need to pay a hundred bucks for him, it's worth it because you are that serious of a collector. You're that serious, and that's why you want him. You're you you're you're willing to steal money for this. Of course, I didn't steal money for this one because I actually saved up for this one. But still, get him. He's worth it. So, there you guys go. Well, anyway, guys, that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you all have a happy Halloween, and I hope it was, f and I hope you have a lot of uh, sugared filled dreams from your candy. So, with that being said, I'll see you next time, and uh, just take care of yourselves. See ya.